All right, please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. Oh, okay. Uh, hang on. Uh, can you guys Hi. hear? Yes. Okay, uh, my apologies. I was trying to get us off you. Uh, Alwyn Mitchell, 446157. Mr. Mitchell, my name is Brandon Kelsey. Along with me is Ms. Jackson and Mr. Freeman will be your pro panel. We'll ask some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. And we'll have Mr. Randy Meyer at the appropriate time will, will give a speak. <coughs> you have the support. Daryl Christian, Lashanta Christian, who won't speak. Tara Winchester will speak. Darlene Christian will speak. Latasha Mitchell will not speak. Sherry Christian will not speak. And Alan Mitchell will speak at the appropriate time. All right, Alan Mitchell deals. Is it A L W I N or A L V I N? A L W I N. Uh, Alan Mitchell, DOC number 446157. You're a fourth class offender. Pro eligibility date 8 27 2019. Good time date 11 21 2023. Full term date 8 27 2034. A 20 year sentence. Distribution of cocaine, uh, sale, distribution, possession, alleged Joe without a prescription, habitual offender, possession with intent to distribute heroin, distribution of heroin. That sound correct? Yes, sir. Hey, uh, how old are you, Mr. Mitchell? I'm 40, sir. How long have you been incarcerated on this 20 years since? How many years? Eight years and three months. Do you have a GED or high school diploma? Yes, sir. I have a GED. You got it while you were incarcerated? Yes, sir. What grade did you drop out of high school in? 12th grade. Why'd you drop out? I started using drugs, sir, and went to chasing drugs at a young age. Now, are you currently in the Steve Hall program? Yes, sir. How long have you been? How much longer do you have to complete it? Uh, 90 days. You have 90 more days? Yes, sir. His anticipated graduation date starts 2 10 23. That'll give you some more good time, Dave. That'll move you up again even further in your good time, Dave. Won't it? Yes, sir. How's he doing in the program? Uh, he's doing quite well, sir. He, he's wrapping up um, uh, soon to begin his last phase of our program. Um, as I said, because he's got you know just a few months left. Um, he's in the phase two portions of our risk management, our living in balance. Um, he's still uh, enrolled in his MRT class. He's completed his victim awareness. Um, he'll soon to be going into his anger management, his strengthening family. Um, and then uh, we'll have him placed in some ancillary classes um, to better fit uh, his uh, individualized treatment needs, sir. Okay, great. Um, tell me about, uh, I'm just looking over your disciplinary rifle. You, you've had some issues with discipline back in 17, 217, 617, 718, 1019, and 1219. Those were all contraband. What was that for? What were all those for? Those were uh, dirty urine, sir. I was doing drugs at the beginning of my sentence, trying to cope with the time that I had, not knowing how to deal with the time I had. But I see that I needed help. And that's why I wrote Steve Hall program. Okay. Um, so what are your plans for you to be released? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? I'm going to live with my father. I plan on going back to Union Local 60, where I was going to school. And also, I was in an apprenticeship program. So that's what I plan on doing, as well as going to outpatient treatment program, because I kind of enjoy what's going on in here. Like, I don't have nobody judging me when I talk about my addiction or what I've been through in the past. Everybody be on the same page. And we look at, I reflect and look back. 
seeing what I did wrong. And that's why we talked about it and it put me in the comfort zone to do better. Okay. Good, good. Um, so you, what, what kind of work are you gonna do? I was going to school to be a plumber, sir, to get my um, plumber, yes, sir. Still working on that? Or are you in plumbing school? You were in plumbing school before when you were on the outside? Yes, sir. When I came to jail, I was going to school and working as a plumber in the apprenticeship program. So what was your drug of choice when you were out there? Obviously, you were, it sounds like you were a user and a seller, correct? Yes, sir, I was. Uh, my drug of choice when I came to jail, I was taking pharmaceutical pills. And I was using that trying to cope with hardship on life, really. What happens when you get back out there? It's going to be some more hardships on life. That's what life is. A lot of times it's, you get out there, you're kind of controlled right now. But when you get out there, it's going to be difficult. You have some hard things to deal with. How are you going to cope with that? Uh, I learned from being in the program, I learned to have to take my time and really just don't, uh, I want to see this. I don't want to, uh, I don't, I don't want to say it the wrong way. I'm trying to find a way I can say it right. When I get out there, I don't want to. I don't want to go back to where I was. So I'm going to cope by taking my time and thinking about my actions first before I react. Because when I was out there last time, I just was acting off of impulse instead of taking the time out. That's what led me back in here, just acting off of impulse. Yeah, because you had your fourth class offender. You've, you've uh, been revoked every time you've been on supervision. Your supervision's uh, bad. You have law enforcement opposition. You have contraband uh, over the last several years. It sounds like you, you're heading in the right direction right now, doing the right thing. But, uh, you know, I, I definitely want to see you continue. You need to complete the Steve Hall program and uh, a few more classes if you can. By that time, it's probably going to just about be a good time, to be honest with you, just looking at it. We'll, uh, We'll hear from um, We'll hear from Mr. Tahara Winchester. Miss Winchester in? No. Is she? Okay. What about Miss Darlene Christian? Ms. Darlene, would you like to make a statement? Yes, I'm Darlene. Please. I'm Darlene Christian Allen Mitchell's mother. I just would like to speak on the, his behalf in regards to him being a man that loves his family, his children, his family loves him. He has a large family-based support system. He was doing so well in the program with the local 60 apprenticeship program. What happened, I don't know, but I do know he has a good heart. He's a hard worker and willingness to pay back to society. I suggested, as well as his conversation with his dad and other family members, that knowing that he's gone down the wrong road, that he can be a mentor to some young man that may have the same obstacles that he has had. But at this point, I'm not one to make the decision, you are. He's a number in the system, but he's a family member and he's a loved family member. He's a son, a father, a sibling, he's a cousin. He just has a large, large family-based support that wants him home to help him. And being home, we can do more with him to be there by him. He's grown, he's older now, when he started out with drugs, it was unknowing to me. It was unknowing. And when I found out, it was too late. I couldn't get him the help. He was already incarcerated. And in regards to the selling of the drugs, I have no explanation for that. I have none. But I want to, I want to let you all know, if it's given the opportunity to come home and be a productive citizen, his family's there to support him. 
All right, thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. You're welcome. Thank you, Leah. Is there time you have you know, the wind chip. Okay. All right, now we're here for Mr. Randy Meyer. Good morning, Randy Meyer, Assistant DA Jefferson Parish. Um, Mr. Mitchell's somewhat of a difficult case. Um, he's only served, I think he said, eight out of the 20 years of his sentence. Um, but I think he, he seems to be turning the corner. Uh, he seems to be doing the right things, you know, getting into the Steve Harrell program. Um, and as uh, the officer there said, he's been doing a very good job in there. Um, I had concerns with, and was, and was interested to know what the contraband uh, disciplinary reports were for. Um, and, and that's a big concern of mine. Uh, I, I think when he does, you know, at some point he is going to get out. And, and again, with him, I think um, some strict conditions, you know, uh, after he completes Steve Harrell, if he's released, that he has some strict conditions to help him maintain his sobriety. Um, I think he's got good family support, and that's, I think that's a, a good benefit for him that he needs to lean on to help him when he does eventually get out. Uh, that, that's our take on it. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Mitchell, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? I just would like to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to be in front of y'all today, and I appreciate it, and I'll be thankful and blessed if I get granted parole. I'll be able to see my, my youngest son graduate from high school, so that's a big accomplishment for him as well as for me. I just want to say thank you. All right, thank you. Pam, prepare to vote. Mr. Mitchell, I'll vote first. Um, yeah, it sounds like you're doing some good stuff. You're really headed in the right direction. You got some good family support and doing some good things. Looks like uh, you got a, you know, you, you got a few more months, obviously, uh, what, uh, in December. You're going to finish your uh, parole. I mean, finish your, uh, so in, in February, is that when you're going to finish your, uh, is that when you said Steve Hall will finish? In February. Yes. February. Um, Okay, listen, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I was going to deny you today, but listen, after listening to you and listening to everybody, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to vote to grant your parole after you complete the Steve Hall program. you got to complete it with no problem. Uh, when you get out, I want you to do three NAA meetings per week. I want you to have random drug screens, a curfew from 9P to 6A. I want you to work on that union, uh, that, that plumbing. You need to get that done. Take care of your plumbing and get that taken care of. And uh, I want you to have random drug screens. And I want you to do community service four hours a month. I know that's a lot, but hey, you need to stay busy. You're a guy that needs to stay busy. Again, I, I plan on look after reading thoroughly. I plan on tonight, but after listening to you, listen to your family, your mother, uh, the work you've done, listening to the, uh, uh, the DA there, I, I'm going to give you a shot. I just want to vote. So that's my vote. Mr. Jackson. All right, uh, Mr. Mitchell, um, I did have some concerns about you. Uh, you are going to be released, you know, once they calculate your good time after two weeks, well, you might need to twice your act, um, you know, good time release day. But I'm going to concur with uh, Mr. Kelsey. I will grant conditionally on the completion of the oil program and with the same uh, supervision condition I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly. Thank my love. All right, Mr. Freeman. Um I guess y'all all changed my mind too. Uh you know you got a lot to live for. You got a son graduating this year. You gotta stay off of them drugs. You do whatever you gotta do in the community to stay away from them drugs. And I'm going to concur with my colleagues. I'm going to vote to grant on completion of Steve Hall program with the same conditions as Mr. Kelsey's state. All right, Jeff, three votes to grant your parole today. Your parole's been granted. Good luck to you. Do you All understand right. the stipulation? Yes, yes, sir. And I will, I will do right by it. Good luck. We don't want to see you again. Yes, sir. Thank you. Very 
Yeah. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm certainly pleased. I think it shows uh, hard work can can pay off. He kind of did all the right things, right? If he hadn't gone into the Steve Foil program, he would not. They would not be granting him parole. But what what I am confused is that um, to how much of a difference did it actually make, right? Because he was going to have his good time date coming up. So man, I must have missed that part. But you know, just to think about it, he was been locked up. So he was thirty two. You get locked up, and then you blink, and you're forty. It's eight years later, and it's like, wow, you know, all that time that you're spending. Uh, spend basically your entire 30s in, in, inside of a prison cell. It's just unfathomable. It's crazy. Um, he seems to have such a great mom and all the support. And he should be so proud of his son to be completing high school. And hopefully he can have the maturity and stay out and uh, get, get get his plumber certification. He made good money in plumbing. But with that, I'll let you go.